All right, guys, welcome back to the Rich Shields Golf Show podcast, episode 234. I'm your host, Rich Shields. I'm here with co-host Guy. I'm back in the UK. You are, with your proper co-host. With None of this Seb Carmichael co-host. Brown business. <laughs> with, uh, with the opportunity to interview uh, Bernard Langer. Oh, Sorry. wow, I don't blame you. What an episode that was. What a guy. You know what? He's, he's so chilled and relaxed, but... Like has such a dry sense of humour. Mm. Really, he was really, really good. We actually uh, that evening had to got to sit opposite him at dinner. I saw, I saw this on Instagram. I actually think after about two hours of sat next to me, and also queried him for about an hour on the podcast. I think he'd had enough of me. I think I'd asked every question that is possibly askable. Have you ever heard of the Eagle Driver? <laughs> I, well, have you though? But what about seven fifty CC, mate? Have you? <laughs> What's your favourite club? <laughs> you got any clubs you're selling? Anyway, no, he, he was really, really good. We interrupt our programme to bring you this important message. Hey guys, hopefully you're enjoying this podcast episode. We'll get back to the episode very quickly, but just want to remind you, this Sunday, I am running the London Marathon. Yes, that's right, for the second year in a row. I'll be honest with you, my training had been going really well. I've taken my foot off the gas the last few weeks. However, that doesn't mean I'm not going to try as hard as I possibly can. And I would love you guys to support it. There's a link down below in the description. We're raising money for It's Never You, a charity set up by my good friend, Kerry, who I'm actually running the marathon with as well. He set it up after losing um, his son to cancer called Hugh. And he set it up to help support parents of children with cancer. So if you would love to support It's Never You, click the link down below. We'd love to raise over £5,000. We really would. So if you can donate, I'd really appreciate it. Um, Next Tuesday, when we're back on the podcast, I'll let you know how I get on. Uh, But yeah, Sunday, I'm running the marathon. If you're there watching, give me a cheer, support me, and please do raise as much money as we can for this wonderful charity. Thanks, everyone. So yeah, I got back from the Masters yesterday. I've come straight here to the studio in Manchester, UK, to chat to yourself and chat to our wonderful audience. Um, a little bit about the Masters, my experience there. I'm sure we've got some questions firing in as well. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say this. Go okay, on. go on, say it. I think this year is going to be one of the most unforgettable Masters ever. Unforgettable. I think this year will be one of the most forgettable, oh, masters, forgettable. <laughs> masters ever. Really? Yeah. Wow. It, I, I've Explain. already forgotten it. All oh, right. Why? Wow. wow. <laughs> I, might have been different on TV. Okay. okay. But it just felt like, you know, when you asked me, was it a couple of weeks ago now, you said, name me the Masters winners for the last 10 years or whatever. Yeah. I think the 2024 one, I'll be like, oh, scratch your head going, oh God, who was it? Who, who was it? Oh, wow. One? This is... What, you, Going controversial, going nuclear. Scotty Scheffler obviously won it. Yeah. Um, it was exciting all the way until, or well, somewhat exciting, all the way to the 11th hole on Sunday, and everyone blew it, and he just charged through the field and took a four-stroke victory. This might be the case of, of you being there, and obviously when you went, you're naturally going to expect big things, but I, I think we sit on very different sides of the fences wow. here. I think it was amazing. Well, that might be the difference of watching it on TV and being there. Potentially. Now, when I say amazing, I don't mean necessarily the last few holes in the final day I was glued to as such, like sometimes a great Masters or a great tournament can be, because it was pretty evident that Scotty Scheffler was going to win it. But I think when I look at it, kind of a more holistic of what we learned from the kind of week of golf is, firstly, and, and even more obvious than ever, how important the majors are. I think irrespective now of the PJ Tour and the Live Tour, ultimately what matters to these guys is the majors as much as anything, and it always has and it always will. I think the majors are in a great spot. I think the emergence of of, of, Aber, of, of Ober, uh, Ludwig Ober, Aberg as we often call him, again, he has had such a strong start to his professional career. It's, it's actually ridiculous that that's his first major. It's in, well, the only thing you could have ever argued, really, about his potential moving forward was, well, how is he in a major championship? And there's your answer straight away. Second. <laughs> second. In the Masters, his first major. I mean, how how crazy is that? So, I mean, that for me was... Because re- it's hard to say, isn't it, about the future of, 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 of a player or of golf now? Because you just don't know. Like, Scotty Sheffield could go on to win the next four, six, 10 majors in a row you might never win one again we just don't know but Ludwig you've got to think now that is the sign that he is going to be here for the long term so that that excited me I thought seeing Tommy up there it was great that again he's getting closer and closer to that major championship I think, I think the one with Tommy I, I'd agree because obviously I was I was incredibly rooting for Tommy 
But it, it, it was almost like he did really well, but you just knew on that fight, he was never going to win it on that final day. Well, I suppose that's the thing, isn't it? If you're looking at it like to, to your point, I guess how you're looking at it was the excitement of who's going to win. And I think realistically, as soon as Scheffler started playing well in the tournament and, and certainly that last day, it was kind of wrapped up, let's be honest. But when you look at, again, Max Homer doing well, it was nice to see Morikawa back. And then you had obviously Smith and DeChambeau who were from the live side of things and, and, and seeing Bryson back was fun. I really That was the other one that I was really rooting for. Like my heart was really in, obviously Tommy Fleetwood, friend of the show, had him on the podcast a few times, had him on the main channel a few times. Like, obviously, I really, really want him to win a major. Mm-hmm. And the Masters could not be any more suitable. Obviously, he wants to win the Open. Having Bryson on the channel only last year, the end of last year, in fact, both of them have been on the channel the last, last within the mm-hmm. last five months. Yeah, I'd love to have seen Bryson win it. And it was great after that first round. I was like, oh my God, like, this could really, you know, set the cats upon among the pigeons if he goes and wins it. Um Personally, Morikawa's story wasn't a float in my boat that really? much. Scotty Scheffler's story wasn't massively float in my boat that why? much. why? Let's talk about know. this. Let's chat Scotty Scheffler. I just, you know, I think it was only last week or even the week before, I said I'm excited about a, a player that's going to be dominating. Yep. And Scotty Scheffler is that player currently who is dominating. But it, even when you just had a chat, even earlier this morning, um, with a friend of ours who mentioned when Tiger was dominating, and I think he, na- he hit the nail on the head, when Tiger was dominating, it wasn't boring, mm-hmm. really. Like, you know, you could always have that horrendous shot in there. You'd know he'd flare a driver off offline. You know he'd make an incredible birdie or, or an outrageous eagle or a, a recovery shot, which no one else in the world can hit. You're not getting that with Scotty. It's fairway, it's green, it's two put, it's making birdies when he can. Like it's just a bit of a different style of dominance, mm. which isn't as exciting as watching Tiger when he was absolutely dominating. When when you anything could still happen, anything in the world, even on the final hole, it wouldn't surprise me if you know Tiger played a shot that nobody else could hit. I suppose, but to that though, is that a case of it's the person that's not exciting or is it the fact that them being in the tournament makes the tournament not been exciting because if he wasn't in the tournament then the leaderboard would look a lot closer together i think it's the person and the style of play now this isn't taking anything away from scott scheffler he is without question the best golfer in the world right now hands down no question regardless of what tour he's on that that's you can't argue that, can you, right now? No. He's unbelievable. He really is. The fact he's won the players this year, Bay Hill this year, and also the Masters. I mean, that's ridiculous. Oh, yeah, absolutely. It's ridiculous. Absolutely. Um, and it's just, I don't know. It, it, something's not quite floating my boat. With wow. him. See, I'll say what I like about him. Oh, this is what I like about Scottish Scheffler. I like his beard now. I think, that's, looks, I think that has added a lot. It That's really has. The part of him. His beard is phenomenal. I like <laughs> his foot movement. I know it's a bit of a kind of a standard thing we speak about, but I just like that bit of a quirk to him. That the positions he gets to when he's trying to draw a ball and stuff sometimes where he ends up, it's just crazy. That's the best player in the world. See, if he did that and hit random shots, I'd probably quite <laughs> like it. You know, like Bubba Watson's exciting to watch. Yeah, I get that. Because he's like, he's got all these mad quirky movements and he's exciting to watch because you never know what's going to happen. I watch Scotty Scheffler with all of his quirks and, and tendencies, but you know what's going to happen. He's chipping. Does that not excite you? That chipping on one, was it on Friday or Saturday when he chipped in on the first? He chipped it in? Yeah, on the first oh, hole. Right. I think it was Friday or Saturday, he chipped in on the first. His putting can be horrific. So what you're saying with the, the wildness off a tee, he can be wild with the putting. He's getting that a bit better now. He's, he's obviously working with Phil better. Kenyon. He's got this uh, spider, this more mallet putter in the bag. Um I, I personally do like him. And I think for me, I, I like it when a golfer does show this level of dominance. But having said that, to your point, I also do enjoy it when a tournament does feel like there's many people that could be in, in it to win it. And there's, there's lots of different guys, different angles, different narratives. But if I look at that leaderboard for this Masters, I can't say I'm let down. No, and for me, it's more, it might be the fact, that obviously I was there and it, my my view on this might be slightly cloudy because I wanted that excitement, you know, massive putt being held on the 15th and or, or like a, an almost holding one on the 16th. Like I wanted something, uh, feel the roar of Augusta 
There was not a single roar. He birdied 16 and I was actually stood on the 18th waiting for, <clears throat> for him to come down 18. And you heard this kind of semi-roar on 16. But you want, for me, you want something dramatic to happen. Like you want this, you know, and it's good advertisement for golf if something dramatic happens. I wouldn't have minded Scott Scheffler winning at all. I don't mind him winning, not even one bit. But if it had just come down to the last few holes with with Oberg in there, with Max Homer in there, with Bryson DeChambeau in there, like, and it just bit of Colin Murray Cower, like it just be a little bit closer, a bit more exciting. Do you think though, as well, if you look at his actual scorecard on the last day, he birded 13, birded 14, and then he parred 15, birded 16, parred 17 and 18. So he's had three birdies in those last number of holes. Like that is the difference, isn't it? Doing that on, on And then if you look at his third round as well, I know you say about him potentially being boring, but he had, he had um, on the 10th, he had a double. 11th, he had a bogey. Then he had an eagle on 13, then a birdie on 15, a bogey on 17, and a birdie on 18. So he has got that level yeah. of like a I bit of a roller coaster to it. You him. know what I was quite impressed with on, on the, on the, he was way ahead of everyone else after the 12th hole. Everyone had messed up the 11th. He'd made power on 12 and he was way ahead of everyone else. He didn't lay up on 13. He went mm -hmm. for the green, knocked it on. He didn't lay up on 15. He went for the green, put it in the green side bunker. Like, he still pushed it. He was still trying to... It might, like I say, it might have just been me wanting to kind of really absorb the roar of Augusta National and have that dramatic final day. Because, you know, I've been to... I've been lucky enough now to go to three Sunday Masters, okay? Um, when Patrick Reed won in, in 2018... Again, it I didn't get that raw. When John Rahm won last year, a little bit more, but didn't one. I think he was leading quite substantially as going into the, into the last few holes, and obviously Scott Scheffler again leading substantially. I think for me, just being very selfish, looking at this, of uh, being on site, you just want to be stood on that 18th green and someone to hold that putt which won it. That mm -hmm. is the putt that hold it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Even when Scottish Scheffler won it two years ago, he four putted the last green to win it. I mean, that, it's like mental. A bigger question then for you, Rick, and we'll come on to your experience at the Masters because I've got a lot of questions for how your week was then. I'm not jealous at all, so I don't really <laughs> want to know. But this was... This Masters, I think, well, the Masters in general is arguably the, the biggest event in golf, the biggest of the four majors. You could, some people would argue the Open. I think some Americans would argue the US Open, and I don't think anybody would really say the PGA, but there's the four majors, those real four big tournaments. And the Masters is obviously the iconic Augusta. It's a smaller field, and it's that first major of the year, and you get that iconic green jacket. For all those reasons, I think, put together and compound, that it is, it is probably the biggest major. Couple of things then for golf is, is it a problem? It's the first major of the year. Does that feel already we're in this hangover at the Masters has been and gone? But also this year, I think more than ever, we were so excited as, as golf fans of seeing, you know, live golf come back together with the PJ Tour for the Masters, with the emergence, obviously, of your Ludwigs, with your Scotty Scheffler dominance, with Rory again trying to win that green jacket and complete that career grand slam. With all these things on the table, what should make golf fans and sports fans tune in. Viewing figures were down. So mm. I think it's 20% on the previous year that viewing figures are down, which is quite a substantial decline. Is golf in a huge problem? What? How do we as golfers, how does the gate, sorry, how do we as golf media, if you like, how do, what, what happens? How do we get golf more exciting and more on people's minds to tune in to watch? What? I think, I think, it's a very difficult thing to measure viewing figures because I'm a true believer that if the final group on Sunday was Rory McIlroy versus Bryson DeChambeau, the viewing figures would not be 20% down. Mm -hmm. Is that That's my opinion on it. I think the viewing figures would have been absolutely, maybe not record-breaking, but higher than last year. I don't think you can ever, you can't ever pick the winner going into the final group. You are going to have exciting uh, uh, masters. You are going to have non-exciting um, masters. A little bit like last year with the Open and Brian Harmon winning the Open. Yeah. Wasn't exciting. No. Viewing figures will have been down for that. But again, if that was Rory versus Tiger in the final group, the viewing figures would have been astronomical. So you're always going to have those odd major tournaments where it's less exciting than others, aren't you really? Yeah. Like if I, if, almost if I said to you now, and you, I'm not going to put you on the spot because it's probably quite a hard thing to think of, but you know, remind me of your, your four favourite final days in major tournament history. They'll all have a dramatic finish. Yeah, well, Tiger in 19 is number one. In, isn't it? Yeah. Like that, because you can't believe that happened. Mm. 
you're never going to think of Todd Hamilton winning the Open in whatever year 2001, it was. 2001, thank you. Well, let me see if oh, that yeah. was right. No. <laughs> like, that's never... I mean, I've, I've said it now because it's so bizarre. But even when, like... Do you remember when Tom Watson had the chance? Yeah. Against uh, Stuart Sink? Was that 2012? Like, what yeah. an incredible... Like, I was glued to that final round thinking, oh my God, is, is Tom Watson going to win um, the Open? At, at, you know, at such a... Um, at, you know older age than a lot of the winners. So I think you're always going to have these, those discrepancies. Um, you just want it to be an exciting final day. And unfortunately you can't script it. Golf, you cannot script it. Yeah, I suppose. Yeah, you're right. Obviously it has to be players that excite people, I guess. That's going to, that's going to definitely help. But I suppose, is, is that then a bad thing for golf? That your biggest tournament, you have to then have two of the biggest players to then make people watch. They wouldn't watch otherwise. So then that does that almost devalue the actual meaning of the tournament, that it's more about who's in it and who's winning rather than winning the tournament itself. You know who slightly ruined it for me this year? <laughs> genuine, genuine. Is, have you heard a guy called Justin Ray? Is he the presenter or something he's, he's a stat guy on um head of content for 21st group i'm not sure it's lead data analysis right and when i was with seb 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 really annoyed me this week in, in because of this guy <laughs> <clears throat> he put some incredible stats out mm. okay for the masters and all, all different majors things like oh i'm sure it's the last 20 years the winner has come from the top 11 players on day one wow and almost once I knew that start, I was a bit like, oh, <laughs> do you get what I mean? Like, I saw that start, I was like, oh, so Rory's not going to win this. Like, it just almost, I was like, I've only got those players to pick from. And it was the case, Scottish Sheffield was in yeah. that top 11. And apparently after two rounds, it's statistically the chance a player in the top 10 is going to win, continue to win the Masters. It's like, oh, for me, it almost ruined it a little bit for me because... In my brain, in the final round, you understand it's going to be quite hard for someone to win, but you think there's a chance of someone coming back and shooting a 62 and winning this mm -hmm. thing. Statistics say otherwise. <laughs> Statistics tell me that's not the case. Um, but yeah, I, <clears throat> I, it's just the drama you want. And the other thing, I, this is my other point, and I genuinely believe, and this is going to be a real hot take, I believe Augusta National have... I'm going to use this word very carefully. <laughs> Compromised the enjoyment of the Masters because of the lengthening of the golf course. Wow. Big time. Really? There was one eagle on the 15th mm. on Sunday. Grace and Murray, weirdly, I was actually there in the grandstand watching it. One <laughs> eagle on 15. There was no, zero eagles on 13 on the final day. Wow. How much did they lengthen those two by? Is it considerably? Quite Certainly the thirteenth. Wow. Remember, Bubba used to go over the corner and yeah. like drive a six iron in there. Like some of the guys can't reach now; they're not going for the green. Like we obviously had Bernard Langer on the on the podcast last year, uh, last week. Sorry, and it's obviously he's older now. Is is this should have been his last Masters? Next year's going to be his last Masters. Now he can't reach thirteen. It's impossible for him to reach. And I genuinely believe because of the length in the golf course, it's made the Masters less exciting. Because mainly because of those two holes, because of 13 and 15, because they're the two holes that anything can happen mm. still. Like we saw, was it Jordan Spieth have a nine on that hole on Friday? <clears throat> and normally you have tons of eagle on, uh, eagles on that hole. There was one on Sunday and zero eagles on the 13th on Sunday. Well, it sounds like the Masters has just messed it up. They've just ruined it. But another another topic then for you, and this is something that kind of I alluded to briefly uh, before we started the podcast. And I'm going to say it out loud, and I might regret saying this. After watching the Masters this week, um, this weekend, and um, having a good think about this. <laughs> I am starting to wonder... Whether you can play in it next year. Oh, I reckon I could. <laughs> I'm, I'm starting to wonder whether Tiger Woods should have actually retired at St Andrews in 2022. Wow. Because I... First of all, and I'm going to contradict myself, it was amazing that Tiger Woods made the cut. I think that was brilliant. And obviously, as a, a lifelong Tiger Woods fan, I love any tournament he's in. And I think this year, and a good thing for golf, actually... The fact that Tiger Woods played was great, but also I feel like there was less 
noise about it than there has been in previous years. It's still obviously a massive factor and he obviously gets a lot of TV coverage and people are interested, of course. But there was so much more narrative around Scotty Scheffler, around obviously Rory, around Ludwig. There was other things to talk about and I don't think, it didn't feel to me, might be different for you on site, it was as big of a story. And obviously making the cut was, was a story and it's the, he's now the record for the most consecutive cuts made at the Masters, which was interesting. So he's, he's, I think it was Fred Couples before that. But he obviously went on to have a 82 on Saturday and a 77 on the Sunday and come kind of dead last out of everyone that's made the cut. And it did look like it was taking its toll on him. And he was obviously in pain and he was sweating like mad. And obviously Augusta, although I've not been, it's a very hilly golf course. And you can confirm this is much, much, much hillier in real life than it looked kind of on TV. So I'm guessing it, it did take out of him. And I think, was it the Friday he had to do, was it... 23 holes or something so that would have been difficult but do we want to see a legend like Tiger Woods playing in events to finish dead last like it's really difficult because you rewind time and it's only five years ago since he won it true and and if you said any of the winners over the last 10 years that could they win it five years after they've won it another time you go yeah of course there's no there's no golfer in that in that list they've won it last 10 years you go they should win it five years after. But surely that almost death experience and that car oh, crash yeah. can then change. I'm going to oh, come on, on to other points at the moment. <clears throat> um, I would say, so, on, uh, I watched him on Sunday, okay? You want to see Tiger at Sunday, mm. in Augusta. And I was fully anticipating not to be able to get even close to Tiger Woods. Because mm -hmm. that's my experience in the past, that I've struggled to even get sight of him. Because the crowds are that vast, okay? <clears throat> I pretty much saw him play the whole of Amen Corner. Wow. 12 and, uh, I missed 11, 12 and 13. I saw him play pretty much 15 and 16, okay? Mm -hmm. and, I, and I comfortably got on the tee on 18 and saw him. And I got into the, the seating area on 18 to watch him. That was quite telling for me. Mm-hmm. It guy, it was comfortable watching him. Like, as in, like, wasn't difficult. That's not normally the case. That is, it? is not normally the case. It is normally ten deep on the eighteenth tee. Like, we left it last minute. We weren't going to look at him on eighteenth tee. And <clears throat> I was thinking, there's no point. I said to Seb, "There's literally, what's the point in going to eighteenth tee?" It's, we got there, and and I was two people back from watching him. Like, but like, he was as close to you are to me right now. And I was thinking. This is different. This is weird. And then we we walked casually, walked down. Um, we walked, we jumped through the trees and casually walked down ten, thinking, well, let's get a glimpse glimpse of him here now, playing his eighteenth hole. You never know what happens over the next twelve. This might be the last time he's ever mm -hmm. at Augusta. I don't think it will, but it might be. And we thought we never get, we're never even going to get close. We could we could literally sit in a green chair, three rows back to watch him finish his finish his golf on eighteen, and that that to me was like, there's a shift in in, in audience, and even when he finished, it was kind of like a bit of a just a polite clap, and it wasn't it was it wasn't going wild. I suppose I suppose the point in, and we've had this chat before when we've spoke about Sandy Lyle, and obviously the Masters is unique in the sense that obviously. You, you do get legends of the game who continue to go and play year in, year out until they are quite old. I don't want to sound disrespectful, but quite old. And obviously this year we had Elazabal made the cut. He came 45th at the age of 58. And VJ Singh made the cut at the age of 61. So these guys are still amazing golfers. And I'd love to see, like, actually to play golf with them because they must be still obviously so incredibly good at golf at that yeah. age. So you kind of think, well, if you have got a green jacket and you can go back for the rest of time and play in that event and have that dinner on the Tuesday night and then play the par three with your family or whatever and, and play the tournament and then still have a chance and make the cut, why would you not? So I do kind of, to some degree, get that. I think there has to be a point though where if it's a year after year of missing cut, missing cut, missing cut, missing cut, then go and have the dinner, maybe play in the par three or whatever and then just chill out but Tiger didn't miss the cut well Tiger didn't miss the cut but what I'm trying to get to is it, it, could there have been a point maybe you know at the open where Tiger retired from serious competitive golf and might still potentially play in things like the Masters as more of a kind of a legend I, I don't know I just feel like I don't want to see him come into these events 
clearly being in a lot of pain, missing the cut or making the cut and then the, the pain taking over and coming dead last. It just doesn't feel right. I do. And again, this might be a conspiracy theory. I do certainly think he shows and maybe plays up to the pain when he's not playing well. Do you think? Yeah. Wow. Like when he's playing well, he's not in pain. Mm. You don't see him hobbling or as soon as he's playing bad, he's hobbling along. <laughs> and he is. I, it's not, there's no question about but it. Is I'm that not, why he's playing bad though? I call him a liar. But you know, if, if I was, <clears throat> if I had a, a history of, of injuries and thought oh, I'm playing bad, I better just get, get the old hobble out. People will start feeling <laughs> bad for me. I suppose t- to my point though is, and I'd, I'd like to hear people's responses either in the comments on YouTube or email us podcast at rickshields.com. I don't know the answer to my question in a sense of do I, if Tiger came out tomorrow and said the masters, I was honored to make the cut. It was too much on my body and that's it. Now I'm hanging up my, my golf shoes. I would be heartbroken. I, I would. Cause I'm thinking, Oh my word, I'm never going to see Tiger Woods in a tournament again. So I don't want that to happen. But at the same time, do I want to see him each year play in the four majors and then maybe a handful of other events, getting a little bit excited before it and then him being you know, in pain and, and maybe making cuts but then coming last or not making cuts? Like what it, he still says apparently he thinks he can win. Like, I think he can, can win. Can he? Yeah. Wow. I I will not ever and this is not me just using my heart to determine this. This is my, my head. I believe he's still got a good enough golf game to win. Wow. Even after this week? Yeah. What, what, what about your head says that though? There was a couple, I can't remember, who did he play with on? I know he played with the young lad, Neil Shipley on the last day. He was on Max Homer Thursday, Friday, wasn't he? Who did he play with on Saturday? Um, whoever it was, a talented golfer, he was knocking it 15, 20 yards past him, like comfortably. And you think he's still got the distance. Like, yeah. I don't. He's still got a distance part of golf course. His putting and short game is still good enough to play at golf course. His irons have always been incredible. So for me, there's no part of his game that should stop it. If if he if he now suddenly hit it fifty yards shorter, which he probably does compared to what he did do. But if he hit it sh- fifty yards shorter than the field, I'd say he's got no chance. He's still long enough, mm. definitely. Like, give him a couple more masters. Let him get back in his stride. But will he get back in his stride? Well, that's yeah. the thing. Yes, I don't know. He will. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think, I hate to say it, but I, I'll go on record as saying I, I don't think he will. I think he might, you know, have more cuts in him. Yeah, and I think he could even sneak a top 10. But I just can't see it. I, I just I, don't think his body can handle it. Was it like, I think on that day, was it, yes, on the Saturday Sunday, or one of the days I think he had to go up at 3.30 in the morning to then do all his stretching to be limber enough to then go and play. Bad. I don't know. I'd like to see it, but who who knows? But anyway, you obviously were there all week, and what was it like? Actually, being on the ma- on the kind of ground at the Masters, was it as good as you expected for the third time? It is. It's you know, I was very, very, very fortunate. I got to go with um, my good friends at Mercedes Benz. Invited me, um, hospitality, got treated like royalty. It's it's unbelievable, and there's nothing quite like. You know what I really enjoyed this year. <clears throat> I actually enjoyed it as a, as a bit more of a, let's say, a, a veteran. <laughs> you know, this is my third time now. Last year, I went every single day. 2018, I went for one day. This is like now my sixth or seventh day at the Masters. <clears throat> and is it as special as the first day? Obviously not. Nothing is, is it really? Let's be honest. What I really enjoyed, though, feeling a little bit more smug, like, I know my way around this place. <laughs> Mm. I, you know, I don't need to go and run to go and see 12 Amen Corner. I've kind of seen that now. Yeah. Like, it was quite nice just kind of sit back a little bit more and actually almost enjoy other people's reactions when it's mm. their first time, almost living it through them a little bit more. So we spent a little bit of time um, with Mercedes-Benz with people who had never been before. And it's like, you know, when you're quite proud of somewhere, you're like, let me show you. Yeah. Let me show you Amen Corner. So this is the 11th. This is the... Oh, so did you design these holes, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, it feels like, oh, you want to see 13? Not a problem. I've got this little shortcut. I'll get us to 13 pretty quickly. You just, you start to understand mm-hmm. the little kind of like, you know, when I get opportunity to take you, I can't wait to like go, come on, let me, let me show you around this place. I, I, and like fist pumping the, the, the security guard going, I build house things. Are you, are you keeping everything right? You know, so you, you kind of see it as a slightly different um, perspective, a bit like how you would be like that with St. Andrews, wouldn't mm-hmm. you? Yeah. 
Like yeah, if yeah. you took someone to the first place to St Andrews, you'd be like, "Let me show you around this place. This yeah. is my town. I know. I know where I'm going." Wouldn't you? Second hand clubs follow me. Yeah. So I, I kind of got that experience a little bit more this time. I didn't spend anywhere near as much in the shop as I did last year. Mm -hmm. um, because most of the stuff I bought last year, I've realised that I'll never use or do anything with. You know what? I've actually got a bit of a mixed opinion on the Masters merch. I think, obviously last year you brought loads back and, and I got a couple of bits. I was very appreciative and I was wearing it this weekend, naturally, while the Masters was on. And obviously in the crowd, I saw a lot of people wearing it. Is it a case of, and I think this is the, it must be that, it's nice stuff, but it, it's because you're there, you just want to go crazy. 100%. Like it's, it's, you can't buy it anywhere else. Yeah. You can't buy it online. You have to have bought it on property. Yeah. But there's, there's also a couple of differences now, and this is where I'm getting a little bit more picky. <clears throat> so last year I bought absolutely loads of stuff, and um, last year I believe it was the first time they started to put almost these slogans on the hat. Mm. So you had like Amen Corner and you had one that said Skip It and you yeah, had one yeah. that said Azalea Caddy Patron. And when I saw those last year I was like oh my god because they were really hard to get hold of. They must have sold them really early in the week very short amount of quantity of them and afterwards I was like I want those hats desperately. So Wednesday arrived <clears throat> got to the uh, merchandise uh, I mean it's massive guys it's absolutely massive you can't Is can't it bigger fathom. than the ones at the open? Cuz they're big. No that, no, that's a really good point, actually. It's not as big as the one at the Open. No, it's not. But this is a fixed structure. Oh, is it always like, there? It's always there. This is... Cause oh, right. Well, I suppose, yeah. There's no... You know, where the, the one at the Masters is just like a big the box. Open, uh, like, uh, sorry, the yeah. Open. It's just a big box that gets put up. So this is like an actual shop almost. Like, almost more, more, like proper tills. Um, All right. You know, it, it's... You know, like... So what happens then in, like, if you went in August? Would it just be sure to take it? Or yeah. It right? just wow. be collecting cobwebs. So... This time, beeline Wednesday, the first day there, I went straight for the merchandise shop and I wanted these hats. Mm. Like, that was my number one priority. I wanted the Skip It patron hat. Master. I bought, how many, how many hats do you think oh, I bought? Three. Matt, how many hats do you think I bought? Five. Is that there as well? Six. I bought 18. 18 hats? Yeah. Where are they all now? At home. I bought 18 hats, okay? Why? I know. I got a bit excited. So you got this massive wall. What? Okay, I know. Earth? You got this massive, massive, massive wall. Because I thought they were going to sell out. You got this massive wall, and they've got all the hats, and they all have numbers to them. And you go to you go to the um, desk, and you say, oh, can I get a number six, a number nine, a number 12? And, they'll, and they go away, and they bring all the hats, right? Yeah. <clears throat> and... I'm fairly lucky. I suit most hats. So I, I didn't really try them on. I went, yeah, I'll take that. I'll take that. I'll have a number one of them as well. And then I was like, well, what are the most popular hats? He went, have you seen number one, three, and seven? I was like, oh no, I've not. I guess one, three, and seven, if you don't mind. What? So I brought up one, three, and seven. So, so I was like, oh, I can't really choose. I'm going to, I'm going to take them all. So I got all the... 80. I can't get over that. I got the Amen Corner one. I got the Green Masters, White Masters with the actual Word Masters. I should have brought them all in. I've got the, the yellow logo um in on the white hat i've got the yellow logo on the black hat i've got the gray hat with the big m that's a new one as well i got the caddy one i got the patron one see i'm surprised that someone that's actually played augusta is that bothered about that kind of merch because you've almost taken it one step further well this is it i'm going to come on to that in a minute so i bought all these hats and, and i got giddy i did Sorry. okay i got giddy and i might have spent but they're not stupidly priced they're going to be 30 40 dollars a hat i think they're like yeah, maybe $30. Okay. So I <laughs> bought all these hats and I bought, I've obviously bought you guys all the nice uh, ball marker and I bought a, a vest and that's pretty much all I bought. I, I, I bought a, 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 a flag and I don't really know why. So I very, I didn't, compared to last year when you saw mm -hmm. the table here last year was full of everything. I really didn't buy that much. And um, I finished and I kind of walked out. I was like, why have you just done that? But I thought to myself, you know what? These hats are going to be hard to find. Every day after these hats were on sale, they've obviously yeah. they've they've gone big. They've hundred percented the hats of of you know all these ones I couldn't get hold of last year. So that's why I bought them. <laughs> so I thought they were going to sell out. I went in the shop on the very as Scotty was coming up eighteen. Me and Seb was that stood by eighteen. I said, right, two minutes. I'm going to nip to the shop really quick because that's when it's dead. Right. Mm. I went straight in, no queue, and it. Not everyone's everything sold out, but pretty much everything sold out. And they had none of those hats left. And I was like, oh, well, I'm glad they've not got them on sale right now. But leaving, uh, I might have bought 
a couple of extra things. I bought a um I bought a wallet, a master's wallet, which I've actually not got with me. And I bought <laughs> I bought a Apple Watch a Master's Apple Watch strap. Wow. Green one. Mm. Completely. That you're also not using? Never. I've not, I don't think I use it. I've oh, got God. nothing that I've, I bought. To be honest though, I only arrived yesterday, so I've not properly unpacked. So I left and, and I'm walking around and you end up chatting to people and obviously, like you said, everyone's got Masters merch on. Mm. Everyone. <clears throat> Last year when I had the honour to play it and we got to go in the actual pro shop, mm. not the merch shop, the pro shop, Okay. And last year when I went in the pro shop, I bought a lot of things, okay? But they'd ap- pretty much absolutely sold out on hats, caps. They had none. However, you now start to see, again, once you've been there a few times, you now start to see, well, actually, the Masters, the actual Augusta National logo is different. Right. And often it's it's with a gold circle around it. Ah. And you now start to see those caps and you're like, I want those caps. Oh, because they're people who've been to the pro shop. Actual pro shop, pro shop. And I didn't get in the pro shop, pro shop this year. So all my hats are pretty much redundant. Yeah. Because I'm never going to wear them because they're common as muck. So, so I did that. Also, last year, you know, the cups. Yeah. I reckon I've got 40 of those cups mm-hmm. I brought back last year. Didn't bring them back any this year. No. Napkins. See these last year? Oh, yeah. The na- yeah. Yeah, little napkins. How many is there? 20 odd? Yeah, easy. They're collecting dust on the shelf. Yeah. So this year I went, well, what's the point of me bringing napkins? We still bought 18 hats. So still next bought 18 year. hats. I saw something on the Nolan Up podcast who were really going against those hats, those skip it hats. I, I, I'm against them. What, why are they just a bit? Last year when I saw them and I told the story about the toilet attendants yeah, selling yeah, yeah, yeah. I went into no uh, public toilet, by the way, while I was there. Oh, nice. Just in case they'd rough me up. Because <laughs> I, I, uh, I uh, diffused their multi-million pound black market yeah. deal so I, I didn't go in any public toilet um the yeah i must admit after a bit they kind of grated on me because last mm. year you saw very little of them you're like those caps are so cool i need those caps this year everyone was wearing them and it kind of cheapened the place a little bit it did wow. it, it cheapened it a little bit you know where you know imagine going to the open and, and you've got all the nice open logo next year you went it said windy <laughs> <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like rough, yeah, wet. You start to like yeah. <laughs> a different hats, but like you start looking and go, oh, I kind of cheapened it a bit. Yeah. It did. I, no, uh, you know. So I don't think the merchandise. Uh, See, I, I think here, right? Let's be honest. There's an arc. You go to the masters for the first time. You go wild. You get all the gear, right? You get everything. Masters, masters, masters. Why not? You go again, you play it, you start to now get dialed in, you get in the little gold logo or a circle because you've, you've played the golf because you've been to the clubhouse. You now should be the guy that actually looks down at people that were in the merch. Hello? You shouldn't be wearing merch. You should be going in a very plain, calm what? outfit and almost laughing at the... <laughs> remember my first time to the Masters. That's why Not, I've got no merch on that. Yeah, don't be going by 18. Next year, I actually want you to be taking some back for a refund. <laughs> <laughs> Take your 18 hat back. <laughs> yeah, I, I was... It, it's yeah it's different it was a different experience this year i really enjoyed it um, do you think justin timberlake would be walking around by 18 hats at the masters no, would he heck he might no. have a little nice little i know little top on max i know and that's it i know i've learned yeah you've let yourself down there but that's why what did fat Perez do was he going crazy in there i didn't go in the shop with him so yeah that was the other thing loads of people i knew this year yeah Last year, nobody. <laughs> Didn't know anybody. It was your thing. Like, was, no one had ever been to the Masters until you went. Then you've been. Now everyone's going. Now it's like, they let anyone in these days. Yeah. Um, they actually came as, as, like, that's another thing, right? And this is, this is all the levels to it. It's stupid. Until you buddy Fred Ridley, you've not completed the Masters. No. Because even, like, the winners of the Masters, they're not members of the golf club. No, don't keep the jacket, do they? You have to leave it there. Every the jacket. Winner. Every jacket. Yeah, apart from the winner for the next 12 months, every Augusta jacket stays at Augusta. And I also didn't realise as well, apparently, if you're a multiple winner, unless you've changed size, you keep the same jacket. So Scotty Scheffler won't have two jackets, apparently. No, I do. they do get multiples. Oh, I heard they didn't. Yeah, no, they do get multiples. All right, okay, I've had, I heard wrong then. Mr. Langer told us a story. This was off the podcast. This was after we'd, we'd had a few, well, I'd had a few sherbets. He, um, <clears throat> one year, he's won it twice. Mm-hmm. One year he opened his locker and he had three jackets in there. It's like, what the hell have I got three jackets for? So he said, hopefully this is okay to share publicly. So he said, um, 
I thought, there's an opportunity here. So he folded one up, <laughs> put it in his suitcase, and flew home with it. Okay. Got a phone call a few days later. Uh, Mr. Langer, um, there appears to be a jacket missing from your locker. Uh, would you pa- pl- politely please send it back? And he just sent it back, no questions asked. Well, why would they know? They, they must have they known that he had oh, three right. in there for some reason. So they literally all have their own locker in there. Yeah. How must be a big locker room because they're going to be. Not massively because I, I got the on, uh, honor again going in last year. They're quite slim lockers, like not massive. Um, there's always potentially a new winner. Like yeah. Scottish Jeff has got one already, yeah. but if Colin Marikawa had one, there needs to be a new locker. <laughs> but I suppose how many, how many Masters winners has there been? Oh, that's true. But I suppose it needs to be room for the future. Yeah. Because in theory, a new person can win it every year. They'll definitely need to expand yeah, at some that's point. What I was it, it's, it's going to get to capacity. But like, you know, when you see the, the uh, major boards at, t- at clubhouses, mm. eventually yeah. that gets filled, doesn't it? And it needs to go to a new board. Well, that's a bit rubbish in a way that if you, if Nick Faldo, for example, has got three, but he can only wear it when he's there because he doesn't keep it home. I know. I did find that a bit strange. They must have a, they must get one made. A little tailor's job. That you can have at home, like even even if you had like a cool trophy cabinet and you have like three of them on like a mannequin or something, not not genuine ones, not genuine ones, but you could have them made as. Little... Please, would you not just find out where they make them? Possibly, and then go to the place and go, yeah, pal, we do as a jacket. Um, I'm trying to think of other stories. Um, the I feel like you're turning more sort of an open guy again now. I feel like it's not. No, it is very, 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 very special. Do you miss watching on TV? Because obviously watching the golf at the golf, and I can't imagine how magical it must be to go to Augusta National during the Masters, obviously. But you don't watch golf like you do on TV. There's a couple of things that I wish they they had at Augusta National, definitely. Yes. I wish they had screens. Mm. Just so you can have a little check, mm. okay? I wish you could have, you know, like at the Open, you've got all the radios. Yeah. Everyone listens to the radio. I wish they had them, definitely. I don't miss the phones. The watch was a was a... <laughs> Brucey bonus this year. <laughs> the watch was a lifesaver. Top tip, if you go to the Masters at any point, get an Apple Watch on, what's it called? eSIM or something. Yeah, something like that. So you can still get, I still got messages. I still could check my emails. It was brilliant. And also, if you go with a few pals, I, I saw this um, tip on Twitter. I think it was uh, Chad Coleman, who w- works for Dude Perfect, used to work for Callaway. Have AirPods, uh, AirPods, AirTags, each one of you. So that you can still find all your mates. Has that been done by your watch to take it? Then? Yeah, because if you, honestly, if you if you lost each other, that's you gone forever. Yeah. You never <laughs> find each other ever. It's, what? it's impossible to find anybody if you lose them. Yeah, like genuinely, unless you had a meeting spot. Um, watch on TV come, again. I'm very fortunate. Um, so Mercedes Benz have like a hospitality house, which is hidden behind the trees on the tenth hole, the par four, four down the hill about four or five of these houses. And in these houses, you get food, you get drinks. It's got screens everywhere. Oh, wow. you so it. you can watch it in there. So we kind of spent a bit of time watching it on TV, then going out. So like if we'd see an interesting group play the ninth, we'd grab an azalea, <laughs> take out drink, shoot down the hill and you can meet them on like the 10th group. Oh, that's really. ideal. So it's like you, you've got the best, best of both worlds. But if you are a patron and I haven't got hospitality, yeah, I would find it quite hard to follow the golf because you've just got these leaderboards. It's one of the weirdest things. So in between each group that finishes the 18th, you have these massive white leaderboard up on the 18th green. And you know that obviously golf's been taking place. And in between groups on the 18th, the guys working behind the, the scoreboards will open the hatch, okay? And everyone's like, ooh, oh, what's going to happen? And then a number gets inserted into that, into that slot. And whether that was Scottish Sheffield was on 10 under, now he's on 11 under, or he was on 10 mm-hmm. under, now he's gone to 8 under. Now, like, and there's all this massive anticipation. You, you have no idea how he's made par, bo- birdie, double. You've got no idea because you can't see it. But once that number goes in the slot, there's either cheers going up or booze or a bit of a <laughs> mixture. Um, so that, that's, that's a mad experience. I love the fact it's not got phones. As much as I was glad could, I had... Could you do it without the watch, though? If you were literally having nothing? I could... I could, it was just that, you know what it was? It was just that connection to the world. Yeah. Sounds daft, but let's say, for example, God, there's I, a house fire. Yeah, that's what puts me off a little bit in this like, day and let, age. Just right, like, let's say, uh, loads of people there would have had pregnant wives. Yeah. I mean, buddy, Scottish Sheffield had one, but like... Yeah, he had a phone. 
like lots of patrons who would have been there would have needed to be contactable, mm. wouldn't they? Yeah. Your house is on fire. You've Something's happened or whatever. You'd need to be... Con- so I felt like I was connected enough to the world with my watch where if something happened and I needed a message, I had it, yeah. definitely. But honestly, guys, there's nothing better in the world than, than not everyone's watching it on phones. Mm. And you know what people end up doing? It's quite a novelty talking to people <laughs> and it's a real novelty and you end up talking to anybody mm. you'll just sit down or you'll, you'll be sat at a grandstand and you're chatting about and then you suddenly say oh where are you from oh i'm from england where are you from i'm from texas and suddenly you start talking to all these random people how many people. hats have you bought 17 <laughs> <laughs> i've got 18 <laughs> no it sounds good um you, I, you're gonna ask me about the, the picture at the oh room. yeah so i saw you and a lot of other people have that iconic picture kind of outside the clubhouse or what looks like the clubhouse i'm guessing it is the clubhouse how do you get that so that there's a roundabout at the end of magnolia lane Mm -hmm. okay and again part of mercedes-benz we were very fortunate each day we got to actually drive down magnolia lane and as you get to the end of of the lane as the clubhouse is there's this big roundabout where you've got the iconic masters logo and the flag sticking out the ground and you'll see a lot of people on social media with that picture (laughs) because you can't take phones and you can't take cameras on tournament days. You can take in a camera for pictures for personal use on the Wednesday. Mm -hmm. Um, So a lot of people take pictures on Wednesdays. um, But on Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, you can't take phones, can't take cameras. So it's really your only opportunity to have a picture taken. Now, again, I think Masters do a lot. Obviously, the tickets aren't cheap. But once you're actually in the grounds, I don't think the merch is that expensive. Mm-hmm. You buy a lot of it, but it's not that expensive, really. Like, even if you just get a normal polo T-shirt with the Masters logo on, $25. That's pretty good. I think that's fairly reasonable. Mm-hmm. I do, you know, I don't think they could charge $50 yeah, for that, yeah. couldn't they, easily. So when you drive in, you see that roundabout and you see people taking the picture. Now, how many photographers do you think are taking that pictures on that roundabout? Well, I don't know. Loads. So like four official photographers. Right. Okay. And they're all at different angles on that roundabout. Okay. Right. So you've all got the, the clubhouse background, you've all got the logo, but slightly different angles, these four photographers. You then go past that, and on the left, there's this queue for the official photographers. In the mornings on Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, that line, I can't believe people queue up in that Crazy. line. Crazy. Guy, it would take an hour and a half, two hours, I'm sure. It's like a ride for a roller coaster, <laughs> it's ridiculous. But they must get through it pretty quick because there's four photographers. But then do you not see the other people in your shot? No, because... Is it the angle of it? So you've got you've got the roundabout, yeah. okay? And you've got the logo in the middle. Yeah. And then you've got a photographer here, photographer there, photographer there, photographer there. So you don't need to do a shot then? No. no. Right, all I'm shooting at the same ah, angle. Okay. And you've got a, an artificial patch of grass that you have to stand on, ah. which gets cut out of the picture. So there's four artificial patches of grass. Wow. With the look. So you, you all get a slightly different angle of the of the same picture. I'm with you. But you don't get in each other's shot. And then the queue is, honestly, it's massive. But we went on Sunday afternoon quiet like probably we probably queued up for maybe 20 minutes i was there with uh holding one trick shot mm-hmm. uh josh i was there with josh mayo who also does tiktok content fat perez joey from um uh bob the sports bob didn't go he got invited but would rather watch on tv <laughs> <laughs> um there was obviously seb there was some of the guys from what's that iron brand that sponsor everybody um Tom- 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 tomoko whatever they're called so to Como. Yeah, there was four of those guys um, and, and a few others. <clears throat> uh, this is mad story. And again, don't say it on the podcast, but that Holy one trick, trick shot guy treated his dad to the Masters. Okay, 69 years old, really nice guy. Josh, Holy one trick shot, shot guy, has nine brothers and sisters. Oh my word. He's one of 10. Wow. And they all, all the names start with the letter J. <laughs> so anyway, that, that was quite fun. But, so you, you get ciphered through and then once you get to the, the section of the line just before, it splits off into four columns and you just go into those columns and it goes really, really wow. fast and you just get, basically, you just get taken away. How do they get the picture to you? So you get a picture, they give you a business card with a QR code and then once you get back home to your phone, it's all free. You don't oh, have to pay for it. Cool. Scan the QR code. You can post it on Twitter, post oh, it on Facebook really or, or save the actual video as a high def 
picture. Wow. So it's definitely worth doing it if you go to the Masters, but please don't do it in the morning. Why, honestly, why people do it in the morning baffles me because it's so, 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 so busy. Top tips, if you want to go to the merch shop, go in the afternoon. If you want to get a picture done, go in the afternoon. The food and drink and everything still on site is super, super cheap and it's really, really good. Um, yeah. Brilliant. That was a good little roundup. I felt like I was there for part of it. I'm trying to think what else there was. It was hot as well. Mm. And, and the green chair stuff is mad. Like, yeah, you mentioned that the other week. You can just go and sit in one. Until that person comes back. Yeah. Oh, you're out of my chair, mate. But it's on, on, apart from Sunday, when it's the busiest, busiest, not all the green chairs are used. No. You'll all, almost always get a seat. Would you go back? Yeah, of course I would, yeah. <laughs> definitely. It, I mean, listen, it, it, as anything, the more you times you go, it starts to... What is better then? Fade the, the magic. Augusta or the Open St Andrews? Very, 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 very different. You can only go to one. You find out that you can only ever go to one tournament again. You can either go to the Augusta in a few years' time or you can go to what will be the 155th, will it? At St Andrews. Oh, that's a tough one. Sunday? Yeah. I think you would have said before this trip, I think you would have gone Augusta. I think so much changed. I think you've enjoyed it. Don't get me wrong, you've enjoyed it, but I think you, you're starting to... Any other Open, it wouldn't be a conversation. Correct. I'll any, give you Any that. other Open, yeah. straight to Augusta. St. Andrew's one, though. The after vibe as well. I don't, I've never been to the to the Augusta, and I can't comment, obviously, but the town of St. Andrew's is just there on your doorstep. There's plen- Chiggering, calling your name. There's plenty to do outside the grounds of Augusta. Way mm. more than I think people think there is. Um... You can definitely be a bit loose, looser at the open. <laughs> like it's almost mandatory that you have to... For you to be very loose. To, to have drank a few. Where the, apparently apparently it's frowned upon at the well, You wouldn't know, you too tall. <laughs> I, had, I had one day, Saturday, where I had a few too many. Too many azaleas. Yeah. Well, when you say too many, that means the other days you had a few, but were relatively sensible. No. Oh, so you had none the other days? Uh, I had maybe two on Sunday... None on the other days. Oh, and then one big. And then Saturday was the big one. That's not bad. It's better than several big ones. Yeah. I can't quite remember, but I might have been the last patron to leave Augusta National on Saturday. Wow. And when I say leave, I was being... Forced out. I'm going to rob a flag. <laughs> Let me just do it. Go on. <laughs> I've got a YouTube channel, you know. Well, Tommy was... I, I wasn't going to tell his story. So... Um, Why don't finished. you save the story for the clubhouse episode? Oh, you naughty, naughty boy! So, because I, I feel <laughs> naughty I, boy, I feel like that is a nice way to end episode two hundred and thirty-four. We are straight away now going to jump into a clubhouse episode, which will be episode two hundred and thirty-five, which will be out on Friday. Which will tell my story. About I'm excited for this. Me turning all Ricky, <laughs> right? Really getting kicked out, right, guys? See you on thanks Friday. for listening. See you all soon.